Hello friends, neighbors, John your wish neighbor here, welcome down the nook. Uh, I'll be putting this out on a Saturday, it's not that, I'm pre-recording, but that's okay, we can still share some whiskey together. Today I want to talk about uh, Wilderness Trail Bourbon. I just opened it like in the little short intro that I shoot, so I haven't had it, uh, but I wanted to share some more bourbon with you and I had it on the shelf. So this is their, you know, it's a straight Kentucky bottle and bond. Uh, bourbon, so we'll talk more about that when we get back. And then, because it is a weeder, I thought, well, why don't we shoot it against this uh, Maker's Mark 101? Because, you know, very, very similar proof point. 50%, 50.5%, like very, very close. They both uh, use wheat instead of rye. So, pour a little bourbon, pour a bottle and bond if you have it, and even better, pour a weeder, something like that, and see if we get any of the same notes talking through this specifically will be about what I get out of this wilderness trail. Three, four. Thanks for coming back. Uh, still playing with things down here in the in the renovated nook, but this will be, you know, wilderness trail. It's a bottle and bond, oh boy. I'll have to write that down below, DSPKY. A bunch of uh, a two, a bunch of zeros, and a three. So uh, I don't know enough about Wilderness Trail. I do know that uh, you know this is a weeder, so they're using like the vast majority of corn, and then a bit of wheat in there, uh, and then a little bit of malted barley to open it all up in the mash bill. They use a sweet mash process, which is actually probably less popular than sour mash. We'll talk about that when we talk about Maker's Mark. But sweet just means everything is going in fresh, everything is going in clear. Uh, they're not using some of the spent uh, fermentation mash from a previous fermentation. Um, but I'll talk more about that later when I talk about this just as a comparison. So that's really all I know. Well, I do know that it also says, you know, right on here, uh, non-chill filtered. So that's nice. Um, I know Wilderness Trail is a little bit uh, newer, but that doesn't mean, uh, well, we'll see. We'll see what the liquid tastes like, because obviously that's what we're here for. So. Uh, here we've got Wilderness Trail Bottle and Bond. It's just their wheat bourbon. So first ideas here are it is a little sweeter. It's a little gentler, which I tend to get in weeded bourbons, but not universally. All that stuff. So all that stuff for me, like when it's when there's nothing that punches uniquely, it's sweet, it's light toffee, it's got a backing of oak because we're talking bourbon, so it's all that new oak. It's not not scotch where you get a lot of barley nuttiness and all that age usually because it's older to get some of the flavors. This is lively, sweet, light almond. Or cocoa, like not cocoa, coconut. I know I, I should say that more often. I don't get a lot of coconut, but... You know, I'm just not getting enough characteristic off the nose. Nothing putting me off, but let's see if my palate can wake up with a bit of sip and then maybe I'll come back on the nose and see more what I'm getting on it. So first sip try of Wilderness Trail. Cheers. Well, that's nice. Actually, that's very nice. Um, it's got lots of caramel, lots of sweet, Lot, and there is a little bit of little bit of heat and cinnamon and that kind of thing spicing going on so it's not bland by any means but it's tending into kind of creamy and sweet another sip because that was the first whiskey of the day and it, it never is fair since i've never had it before and that's the first whiskey of the day so we can't trust any of the notes cheers very nice i am curious how this is going to compare because i really am liking makers 101 right now um it's a little hotter on that one, a little bit younger, a little bit punchier, a little huggier, um, which surprised me. Usually the first sip of the day is that. Instead, this one um, brought up some other spicing. So it, for me, it's it's pushing into, into um, cinnamon and gin, light ginger, almost an orange note, if I'm thinking fruit, like a pithy orange, um, that kind of thing. It's not bitter per se. Uh, but it started quite sweet and I thought we we're going to stay sweet and creamy because of all that wheat. And now we've ended into a little bit more, you know, oaky, spicy, somewhat bitter. I think we're going to have to go to Makers 
and come back with some final thoughts on this wilderness because right now it's just tasting good, but it hasn't won my uh, taste buds or my palate in any really one direction. Okay, I chose Maker's Mark and specifically the 101 because um, Maker's is known as a weeder. Uh, it's probably the best known weeded bourbon that most people have tried at one point in their life. And uh, this one, you know, they've, they've selected the barrels a little bit differently than the regular uh, makers. And, uh, you know, they've upped the proof. So we're at 101 instead of 100. So like 50.5%. And so I thought, you know what? Here we've got two weeded bourbons, very similar percentage. Let's see how they play out. Oh, and this I got a great sale. Canadian uh, 58 bucks. So that's good. I also got this on a great sale. But this is priced higher just generally on the shelf than the Wilderness Trail. So this makers, oh, I was gonna to talk to you about Sour Mash, so just very quickly. Uh, Sour Mash is, uh, I think it started, if I may, with uh, wanting to kind of like prepare the fresh mash coming in by using the spent fermentation, so it's all done, um, and it's a bit lower in pH, and so that's the, the concept of souring. When you put it in the fresh, uh, what you're about to ferment is, uh, my understanding is that actually helps reduce it changes the pH, lowers it down, and that helps uh, fight bacterial stuff that you don't want growing, throwing off weird flavors, but the, the yeast are still perfectly happy uh, chewing around and all those good opened up sugars of the grains. That's the concept. So this is a sour mash, but that is a sweet mash. A lot of stuff. Let's talk Makers 101. So in contrast, the Makers... Well, I was going to say, the Makers is bringing a little more cherry, a little more sweetness, a little bit more richness. But just as happens lately to me, it's really opened up the nose back on here. So it's a little sweeter and darker just on the nose. Let's try the palate. Cheers. I really like Makers 101. Uh, like it is a significant step up. In my neighborhood, it's often three times the price of regular Makers. Is it worth three times the price? That's tough. Is it worth more than the regular? Absolutely. This is a finer selection, a finer release. I get lots more. It is, it is nice, it's coating. I do get some cherry, which I don't get off the regular Makers. And then all the good bourbon stuff. It's got good oak, it's got nice char, it's got good cinnamons. It's a nice, nice dram and it just feels so great in the pellet. Quick comparison back to the Wilderness. Okay, I wanted to come back to the Wilderness Trail after having Maker's Mark because I'm really wanting to remove like uh, whatever I might have had earlier on the day and just get into the bourbon. So, you know, it's come back and it's brought up some nicer vanillas, a little more sweetness, a little aromatics when I talk about vanillas that's sweet and, and more in the nose. So the nose has improved with a few minutes here talking different bourbons. Let's try the palate. Cheers. I think we're back into that sweeter, lighter wheat profile, but with a finish that is spicier and hotter. I find it hotter than this, but the palate has settled in. It's now a little marshmallow sweetness, a little creamier, a little, you know, sweet aromatic vanilla. Um, it's really settled down in my understanding of this palette. For my tastes, I'm preferring this Maker's Mark 101. A little bit biased maybe, I've really been enjoying it and I've had many drams. I just opened this with you now, it's a neck pour. Should never evaluate a bourbon on that. It might, you know, just settle in a little bit. Just a little bit of the higher alcohols might go off and then I won't get so much burn. So, it's nice. Is it, you know, I got it on sale, I said for 58 Canadian. Is it 58 Canadian nice? Well, I guess nowadays, yeah. Like it's a good quality bourbon, bottled and bond. It is nice. It's much creamier than uh, uh, my uh, guard whiskey. Like Vin Piaf, he talked about guard whiskey. My guard whiskey on my bourbon is like Old Grandad. I love Old Grandad, but it would be much rougher. This is creamier, smoother, gentler, even though it's a big proof. It's at, you know, 50%. Um, anyways, quality bourbon, first thoughts only, not giving it a star rating of any kind. This moment, I'm preferring the 101, but I can see how they're playing in the same place. Take care.